Hey YouTube, Coach Lee here, and oh my God, I think my prayers have been answered. So I'm going to prepare you guys because uh, I'm going to talk some shit here, and you guys should know this, but I'm going to tell what I, what I see and how I see it. So for those who know me, know that I'm super critical of rule sets, and I'll probably go into a deep dive rule sets video eventually. It's like 40 minutes long that maybe five of you will watch. But for now, we're going to talk about the history of the tournaments in Europe that we see, and what I see as a potential positive change led by Hema Praha and BITN, Battles in the North, held by my friend Yanis Kambatserius of Apocalyptic Knights Channel. Shout out to you, my friend. What we're going to see now, hopefully, is a wake-up call and a resurgence of the combat sports HEMA. That is what HEMA should be. And this is really cool. This is something that I feel quite positive about, especially after watching the events at HEMA Praha. I was pretty impressed. But let's get into the history a little bit more of the European tournament scene. For years, the European scene has been dominated by the Nord Orc rule set. Yes, I called it Nord Orc, because essentially that's what the Nordic rules promote, Orc behavior, which essentially is, you hit me, I hit you back, more points for me. So any idiot who's tough enough and armored up enough can essentially win that tournament. It's not high skill, you don't, you don't see a lot of skills in those tournaments, because if you've watched Swordfish or you've watched some of these major like Scandinavian tournaments, it's not very clean. Like the, the devices aren't very good. You can't half the time see what's going on or really understand what's going on. Or it's two men flailing around with a single hand on a flat like that horribly infamous final that we saw all those years ago. Then years later, we have the flip side, the recycled Olympic fencing longsword domination that we see based out of Slovakia and the countries around it, which essentially is just one person fly fishing around like this, hoping to make a bend that the judges see, which usually ends in some kind of afterblow or a flat strike getting called or going to the result of calling any contact in tournament, which is even worse because honestly, if you watch this channel long enough, you know that you need adequate contact with proper rotation to make it through even the basis mediums. Maybe not a water bottle, but if you're at least cutting it a time mat, if you know, you know. So between the two, the Nord Orc rule set and, of course, the Recycled Olympic Fencing Longsword, Rawful for short, you essentially have two opposing rule types that promote what is completely a martial behavior. There's been rumblings for a long time on the, un on the underbelly of HEMA and swordsmanship forums and essentially private conversations in back rooms. There's a lot of dissatisfaction with the disconnect between what a sword does and the tournament rules we have. And no rule set is perfect, by the way. But trying to get to something that's more realistic should be the goal. It shouldn't be your whack-a-mole rule set or trade blow rule set like we see in the Nordic rules or the any contact counts we see in the, in the Raffle rules. Hima Praha did a great job of finding a nice martial balance return to combat sport, which... That is something I was been hoping for for a very long time. Watchable HEMA. What do I mean by watchable HEMA? The average person doesn't give a crap about who we like on HEMA ratings or any of that. They just want to see clean fighting and they want to see clean exchanges. Whether you want to believe me or not, whether you even take the time to talk to the average person watching your tournament or not, I have. People don't care about your HEMA rating. And they really don't care about who you are. They only, only care when they come to a tournament or an event or they see something online. They only really care what makes sense to them from a martial perspective. And for a beginner's tournament, I was pretty impressed. I can honestly say that I spent more time watch, spending, I stayed up till two in the morning watching the event because it was engaging. The fighting was pretty good was much better than what I've seen of any of the finals in Swordfish, for example. So clearly the man behind it, the CEO of Keviton, Alexander, Alexander Stankovic, did a great job with his vision and implementing that vision. Mr. Stankovic did something that I haven't seen in a while. It was very ambitious. 
he set up six rings. Not only did he have six rings, he had six separate cameras covering each ring, running it through the Hemagon software. A software, I have to admit, was pretty good. I may even consider it for my tournaments. Who knows? And he streamed it directly through YouTube. Hema Praha link below. Which was also cool because, and this is where things get interesting, I could have all six up on my, on my browser tabs at once and find out the fighters I want to watch in what pits. Super awesome. I really, really like this feature. Was it ambitious? Yes. Did he pull it off? More importantly, yes. Hats off to Mr. Stankovic. Alexander, well done. Running live stream on two pits is difficult. Running live stream on six pits. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a task. Chop like button. Smash subscribe. Or just freaking subscribe, people. Thanks. I will try and want to get to 100,000 this year. And uh, yeah, watch more videos. Thanks to Patreon subscribers. And there's a free Discord. Just sign on with your real name, people. It's free. And we have resources there. So, catch you later. So two members of my Blood and Iron Hungary chapter, Christoph Leiber and, of course, Matty Rosvalgi. I probably butchered his name. Sorry, Matty. But they decided they were going to go and check out this tournament. We went through the rules together, thought they were pretty good. And overall, their first impressions coming in, the people were kind, they're welcoming. It was, uh, and for them, it was a really good experience. And how they did, they had a lot of fights. Number one, this is a real cool priority. They had two pools, and they essentially just flipped them and mixed them up afterwards. So essentially, you had to go through two pools to, to determine your full seating. And for a beginner intermediate tournament, that's important because when it's hard to find good quality fights, you want to have as many of them as possible. And that's what this tournament promoted. It was a real grinder of a tournament, showed people's endurance. This also succeeded wildly, and my guys really enjoyed themselves. So judging. Judging and officiating is always a problem at HEMA tournaments. Mostly because everyone has their own ideas of how they should do it. Everyone has their own blow calling ideas. That's also problematic. And unfortunately, most people don't take the time to learn how to analyze video or learn to analyze movement so that they understand when a blow hits its quality and when a blow hits that's not. The judging at Bohema seemed pretty good. I mean, seem really good actually like i mean overall considering it's a beginner's tournament it's a new event and it's run and, and it's and it's run by what is a fairly new club i really really like that uh the fact the other thing i liked is that he provided all of the swords for the tournament this is very cool it means that no one has a special sword they've lightened up it means nobody has um some kind of extra long sword or maybe like something they can put a new blade they can put this longer it's all fair and basically the only advantage are the ones that you've trained in or the ones God gave you. And that's really it. And after that, it's just a, a facet of how much skill do you have. So some controversies. It's HEMA. There's going to be drama. There's going to be controversy. People got bruises and waffles. People in the Facebook comments were crying about it. But Alexander's response? Top notch, buddy. He didn't back away from it. And, you know, he was totally right in what he said. I'm going to pop this up here. I'm just going to, I'm going to read this out. So, in one of his posts, he writes, in one of his posts, under Hema Praha, I'm assuming this is probably Alexander writing this, uh, we probably have more quality st strikes on quality. We probably have more strikes on quality at this one event than the whole season. Winky face. <laughs> Well, I can assure you, Alexander, having to consume many hours of HEMA video from Europe, you are likely correct. Maybe even three seasons, you had more quality strikes at this one event. When you looked at the list of injuries, it was minor. I mean, they're minor bruises, contusions, a few hematomas. No one's really broken. When it comes down to a hard tournament, a combat sports tournament, with 56 competitors and hundreds of, of, hundreds of fights... That's really good. Um, the only people who don't understand that are people who come from Olympic fencing, where unfortunately the hard contacts and stuff from pure sport doesn't really jive. It doesn't, doesn't fly. They don't understand it.
But if you come from like a Muay Thai background, a martial art, an actual martial arts background, a combatives background like myself, this is par for the course. Are you able to train in a week? Yeah, great. Back to her. That's a difference between a combat sport and a pure sport. And he's right when he says there are more quality strikes in that one tournament than a whole season of tournaments regionally because that's what I saw. And I think he knows because I know the most important part of that is if we know and people are watching, those who don't train and don't do sword fighting know. And if they know, that's the audience that we need to watch us for this sport to elevate and grow. The takeaway I get from a Bohema event is this is the start of a greater schism in Europe where we're going to see less of pure sport ideals and more of the combat sports idea coming back to HEMA. And if that is led by the man who started Kevitan, awesome. That's awesome because he has the means and he has the software and he has the tools to make this a reality, whereas most of the other organizers do not. But that also means because he has the financial investment, he's going to take this more seriously than a nonprofit group that doesn't really care whether it's going to be touch fencing or, or Nordic rules because they don't care if people are watching. But Alexander does, and I do, for the same reasons. So we may have watchable HEMA again in the future because what people want are martial, martially valid exchanges and blows. They want clean exchanges where techniques can be seen. And what they want is fairness in the competition. And if you can give them all three of those things, we won't just have us HEMA nerds watching it. We're going to have other people who just like swords watching what we do, who are legitimate fans of swordsmanship watching and enjoying what we do. And that, guys, that right there is the path to greatness and the path to this going from being an obscure sport to being mainstream. So to Alexander, great job on your event. Congratulations. I was really impressed. It'll inspire me when we hold events here in the Philippines to try to meet such a level. It's a high bar, but I'm definitely interested in going that route. Well done. Because of that, I'm sure you'll see Kristoff bring more of his hordes of black and gold wearing Hungarians down to your event next year. Because honestly, he had nothing but good things to say. And if he has something, nothing but good things to say, I have nothing but good things to say as well. So keep up the good work. Don't take shit from the critics because really all they're going to do is this, but they aren't going to do a lot of this. And for the rest of you guys out there watching, my viewers, train hard, fence easy, get to the gym, get to the sal, hit each other, lift weights, get the f*** out of here.